Greetings all. Happy quarantine to you, whatever day this is. Of course, if you're stuck indoors, you might decide you're going to pick up a hobby, an indoors hobby, maybe scale modeling. And as you know, I dabble in it a little bit myself. You've seen the models in the back shelf. And you know, of course, I'll put a different one out front every now and then. And I will run out soon enough and start to recycle them. And a lot of people have inquired about the models. Well, okay, what the hell? I don't see why you're interested in it. But if you want me to ramble on about modeling, I'll ramble on about modeling. And I started decades ago, at least three decades ago, probably more. Um, my dad used to always bring back a little present from his business trips. He came back from, I think it was Japan once, and he had a model tank, a Tamiya a Leopard 1. And I remember building that on the veranda of the, the grandparents' house in Greece. And for those of you who didn't know, I actually have Greek. My mother's from Thessaloniki. And I kind of got the bug from there, and my dad has regretted it ever since. Yeah. Anyway, as and when I can, which is nowadays almost never, because between the family and YouTube and all the other things that I do, modeling has really gone down aside. That and flying, which I don't do simply because it just costs too damn much money and I don't have the dollars. Um, here's an example. So I started this kit it's by fine molds back in at least 2018 maybe 2017 and as you can see it has not progressed very much since the move i've gone a little bit further in this trumpeter k1a1 and it's it's actually not the greatest kit i've ever built but trumpeter is always kind of with some of the early trumpeter stuff like on, on the shelf behind me you, uh, you'll see the uh, osario the uh, Brazilian tank, awful kit. The Type 98 that's next to it, equally bad. I've got a great idea. I'll just do a simple, cheap kit. I won't try to super detail it. Won't do anything like that. No. I end up spending more pain and angst trying to fix, just, just get the whole top to fit to the bottom part. Anyway, anyway, so anyway, this K1 I've been working on even longer but as you can see it's most of the way done since i came to texas i have added the caliber 50. so just got to paint that up do and some of the detail work then a dry brushing the whole dot filters and all i don't do that yet whatever if i'm happy i'm happy so that gives you an idea of the rate of advance that i've been going here the next problem now i'm in texas a little bit more humid so okay yeah i've got the water trap on the airbrush but I'm not sure that the garage, when it's 110 degrees outside, is the best move, especially in the humid times when it's also a thunderstorm around the corner. So I'm going to start working indoors, which means that I've got to kit myself out for indoor working. And, well, look what I got. It's a damn paint booth, which is big, metal, heavy. And guess what? I gotta put it together. And I had to go to Home Depot to get the ventilation ducts and very relaxing. I mean, yeah, you gotta build a kit to build your kit. And then when you've built your kit, oh, it gets even better. So, wave example. I picked up a while ago this, uh, I think it's Meng, yeah. Meng BMPT. Now I'll let you know into a little secret. I like the modern stuff a lot more than I like the World War II stuff. I've made my living in World War II, and you know, I guess I actually know more about it, but I actually prefer the modern stuff. And, well, the BMPT is an interesting model, and bless them, the Russians still actually paint theirs in multiple colors, which look colorful, a bit like that Korean thing. So I'm expecting a fun build. Hmm. Open it up, and you see the standard set of sprues and nothing too unusual so far I mean they're just sprues a very nice instruction manual I mean it's an honest to god booklet lovely it's a booklet with 40 something uh, steps in it but okay things have improved in the days there's a little bit of photo etch I mean, not much, just enough for the gratings and things like that. And then I get to these sprues. 
As I look at the sprue, I see each individual end connector and center guide is separate from the track. I mean, it's not just a case that you put the track links together. I kid you not, each individual track link comes with its pins, just like the real thing. And you have to, you put it into a jig. Yeah, here, here's the jig here. It does, it looks like five links at a time. And you hook them together. Each individual end connector has to be removed from the sprue, have to uh, shave it off with the knife. Then you, you maybe you file it if you, if you go that way. Oh, better yet, the pads, the individual track pads. In the real tank, we were driven nuts with these things. We said to hell with this. We, weren't, we, we changed track pads on one and one. And uh, we decided we'll just, what was it, 277 links per side by two by two, whatever the hell 77 by four is, uh, 200 and that's a lot, nearly 300. And we, we said the hell with that. Next time we're just going to change the entire damn track and let somebody else deal with the pads. Oh no, I don't get away from that now. Meng have said that I'm not only if... Maybe there's some link, uh, some easier track that I can get after market. But Meng have said, no, no, you're going to put each individual damn track and pad and end connector and center guide on your model. I'm going to spend more time on this track than I am doing the entire rest of the model. It's absolutely insane. It's kind of, this is fun. Yeah, I thought it, I thought that was bad. Well, let me move on. One moment as I put this stuff away. And of course it's, you know, there's more sprues in here and plenty to keep me going. When am I going to have time to do this? Now, my preferred scale for armor is 1 to 35. My preferred scale for aircraft is 1 to 72, although I do have a couple of 48 kits uh, hanging around, waiting to build. Uh, preferred scale for ships is 1 to 350. So I have picked up Mogami after her conversion to aircraft carrier, which in hindsight, may have been a foolish move on my part because of the amount of airplanes I need to build. Okay, maybe I'll just uh, play it as she actually was fielded without any airplanes. She might have had a couple. But anyway, so let me let me open up my Gammy kit. And again, it's not nice and pretty. Oh, I'll lift my sprue cutter here. And so we have sprues. We've got a, a nice booklet. It's, Kind of similar to the one I had on uh, Enterprise in Iowa. A little bit of, a little bit of photo etch, okay. And of course, underneath is the uh, the hull. Acceptable. So I thought to myself, I know what, I'll super detail this. I'm already not looking forward to doing the rigging, by the way. But to super detail it, I went and I picked up. The Flyhawk Super Detail Kit. It's photo etched. It comes with a lot of instructions. A lot of instructions. And let me show what these are for. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Fourteen sheets of photo etch. And this is where, if you if you know what you're doing, I, I, I could do it a piece of advice. Great, I've damaged myself with the cardboard. These photo etch decks, I'm trying to figure out how they actually apply. To the sprue because obviously the sprue has raised bits and I would assume that some of them need to be removed but the manual is not particularly specific as to how it is done 
do uh, because I mean, if I put the photo etch on top of the deck, well, obviously it has just increased the height of the deck by you know, whatever the thickness of the photo etch is. So obviously there is a uh, there is a question there. I'm trying to find the the piece of sprue that covers this. No, the photo etch which covers this. So you can see the photo etch of the deck rear, the the catapults or or not catapults. I'm sorry the the railing system that you move the aircraft around with and you can see here there's the raised detail for the actual rails there's a uh, uh, there's depth down here uh, for the uh, for the troughs I guess you call them uh, and there's a whole bunch of these little yeah I think that's on these ones where did I go Oh, it's on this side. So there's a whole bunch of these little raised projections here, which obviously don't have holes for them in the photo wedge. Um, so there are some little holes that are there. So I'm in, I'm thinking that I'm, I'm simply supposed to file down absolutely everything that doesn't have a hole in it in the photo wedge to make it flat and then simply apply the photo wedge on top of that. I mean, the, the forecastle is, is hideous for this, it looks like. And, well, if you have any tips, if you have done this, please let me know in the comments below how the hell I'm supposed to do it. Because right now I've been sitting on this, kind of going, I don't even know where to start. I mean, it's nice to know you have the kit. I mean, that's what everybody does. They make model kits. But I'll take whatever help you can give me. The one thing I do know is I am going to avoid, like the plague, oh, gun barrels. I'm going to avoid, like the plague, the photo wedge kit for the slat armor. Because I know people that have made it. And they have said that they are never doing it again. If I can't handle 14 sheets of photo wedge for a ship, and then, rig and then the rigging, no, uh, I'm, I'm not going to do bar. So... If you are not already a scale modeler, I assure you this is a very relaxing and calming hobby. You can spend much time and money on it. I'll let you know how I get on. <laughs> I'll let you know if I even finish the damn K1. But uh, there you go. That's uh, my little rant on what is my longest lasting hobby. And probably the one I'll keep doing until I finally have to start getting ridiculously thick glasses. But until then, I guess I'll keep making. And uh, in the meantime, the next video, I guess, comes out Saturday. So take care. I'll see you then.